Hello adventurers and welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving into the realm of Mega Dungeons. Recently I had the pleasure and the challenge of running a massive 150 room dungeon complex for my players. It was an epic journey filled with traps, stealth, factions and negotiations between those factions. It all contained plenty of monsters lurking in the shadows as well. Managing dungeons with this many rooms hasn't always been easy for me. In fact, some of my earlier videos, you might have seen me struggle to keep things organised and engaging when dealing with sprawling dungeon layouts. Some of my earlier videos even recommend removing unnecessary rooms and simplifying larger dungeons, a strategy that can still be used for newer game masters. But fear not. Today I'm excited to share with you the key steps and strategies to conquer these vast labyrinths and deliver unforgettable adventures for your players. If this video is useful to you in any way then please consider liking and subscribing. I'm trying to get more videos out and this month I've tried uploading uh, a lot more regularly. The longest I've gone this month is one fortnight before uploading a new video. I won't always be able to maintain the pace of uploading weekly, but my goal is at least one video a fortnight. So I hope you decide to stick around. Okay, planning and preparation. Before you even think about unleashing your players into the depths of a mega dungeon, take the time to thoroughly plan and prepare. Map out the dungeon layout. Populate it with diverse encounters, traps, puzzles and treasures and establish the overarching themes and storylines that tie it all together. Planning and preparation are the foundation of any successful Mega Dungeon adventure. Let's dive into some of the key steps and strategies to ensure that you're ready to tackle the challenge head on. I'm going to put the most important information and tips at the start of the video so as to not waste your time. Assemble quick reference notes for each room on an A4 sheet of paper. Print the dungeon map out and write descriptions, monsters, traps or anything else that you might need onto these notes. These should include a brief overview of the room's contents, some key features and potential encounters or challenges. Having these notes readily available during the game will help to keep the pace moving and ensure that you're always prepared for whatever the players throw your way. You can still have detailed descriptions, but a quick reference guide containing where the monsters are, the core features, and one or two descriptive elements allows you to be ready in seconds for whatever room the players enter. I only include large descriptive details for special rooms, so my players know that if I take a pause and start describing something in detail, then they better listen up as it's important. This cheat sheet, these quick reference notes for the Mega Dungeon, should be the bulk of your prep work, aside from either designing the dungeon or reading the dungeon if it is from a pre-made adventure. You should realistically be able to run an entire level of the dungeon from one sheet of paper if you do this correctly, and it will speed your games up and make running this huge space far more enjoyable for you. This leads into the next piece of advice. Start by mapping out the dungeon layout in detail. Consider using digital mapping tools like Dungeon Scroll, or use one of the many outstanding pre-made maps that are littered throughout the internet. The important thing here is to understand your dungeon and be able to accurately describe its layout. In my opinion, the best dungeons have some interesting design features, such as this central shaft that runs through the mega dungeon I recently ran for my players. It allowed easy access to any floor of the dungeon for characters able to levitate or descend via a rope, but also made any noise made in these rooms echo throughout the dungeon, making it incredibly dangerous. Some dungeons aren't mapped in detail, and some game masters like to have their players create their own maps. This is fine, but most players are visual gamers. The more visual cues you can give them, the more engaged they will be. And at the very least, you need to understand your dungeon design in order to run it properly. Lastly, traps are a staple of any dungeon, and mega dungeons are no exceptions. Get creative with your trap designs. Incorporating both mechanical and magical traps that challenge your players' wits and reflexes. 
I love the traps from Paths Peculiar on Instagram and describing these to players and then showing them an image of the trap works really well as they are very creative. Use classics like pit traps and poison darts all the way to illusory corridors and shifting walls. The possibilities in a magical world are endless. I love to run trapped corridors, so my favourite dungeon maps have long corridors filled with traps, and I don't run them like a step-by-step trap where a player is moving through the dungeon and I go, oh, you're stepping on a trap. This slows the game down and it feels bad. It's also ruined by the find trap spell. I run gauntlets where the whole corridor is trapped with 6 to 12 different traps that I run like an initiative. The players move through the gauntlet and use abilities and spells and on an initiative of 20 and 10 I get to pick 2 traps from my list of 12 and use them on whichever players I select. If traps are area of effect I can target the whole party in some instances and this works much better and is more cinematic and fun. By taking the time to meticulously plan and prepare your mega dungeon adventure, you'll set the stage for an unforgettable journey filled with excitement, danger and discovery. So, roll up your sleeves, sharpen your pencils and get ready to delve into the depths of adventure like never before. The next tip I have is chunking and segmenting. Now that we've covered the basics of planning and preparation, let's delve into the concept of chunking and segmenting your mega dungeon. While many dungeons are structured around traditional levels, there are countless ways to approach chunking and segmenting that can add depth, variety and replayability to your dungeon experience. The most common approach to chunking a mega dungeon is to divide it into distinct levels, each with its own theme, challenge and inhabitants. This classic approach allows for clear progression as players descend deeper into the dungeon, facing tougher foes and greater dangers with each level they conquer. Another approach is to divide the dungeon into thematic zones or regions, each representing a different aspect of the dungeon's history, ecology or purpose. For example, you may have a section of the dungeon dedicated to ancient ruins overrun by nature while another section houses the lair of a powerful necromancer. This approach allows for greater variety in the dungeon's environment and encounters, keeping players engaged and intrigued as they explore. It also clearly establishes which rooms and sections would be fought over or become veritable peace zones between faction agents. Consider structuring your mega dungeon around competing factions or power groups vying for control of the dungeon's depths. In my recent game, the upper levels of the dungeon were controlled by a sum of around 40 bandits occupying the ruins of a castle, which is just an above ground dungeon. These bandits were negotiating and in conflict with several factions in the catacombs below, such as ghouls and trolls. Consider how these segmented sections interconnect. Your dungeon shouldn't feel like a jumbled pile of rooms and corridors, but stairways and levels, large open spaces and twisting tunnels, portals and shafts, elevators and bridges. Introduce powerful dungeon bosses or mini-bosses that serve as guardians of each dungeon section or level. These bosses could be monstrous creatures, powerful spellcasters or cunning masterminds with their own unique abilities and agendas. Defeating these bosses rewards players with valuable loot. Unlocking shortcuts to new levels of the dungeon, discovering key lore or plot points. I advocate for making these bosses optional and the reward for seeking one out and slaying them should be far greater than simply sneaking past to the levels beyond. By embracing the concept of chunking and segmenting, you can create a mega dungeon experience that is dynamic, immersive and full of surprises at every turn. Whether you opt for traditional levels, thematic zones, faction territories or a combination of all three, the key is to provide players with a rich and varied dungeon environment that encourages exploration, discovery and strategic decision making. 
So think outside the box, unleash your creativity, and prepare to lead your players on an epic dungeon crawling adventure through a rich variety of different zones. The final tip is player agency and exploration. Mega dungeons are all about exploration and player agency whilst managing resources such as light, food and time. With such a sprawling dungeon, resource management becomes critical. Encourage your players to explore every nook and cranny, reward their curiosity with hidden secrets and treasures, and embrace the sandbox nature of a dungeon by allowing them to choose their own path forward. But keep track of your players' resources such as health potions, spell slots and other consumables, and provide opportunities for them to rest and replenish their supplies strategically. By drawing attention to specific resources, certain areas can become far more dangerous. For example, in a game that I ran, set in a vast underground cave system, I explained that light was their primary resource and measurement for timekeeping. I explained that zones of light, such as bright light and dim light, did not exist. When bright light was eventually subsided, it was overtaken by darkness, and this created a very claustrophobic sense of dread as the darkness of the caves were constantly pushing in on the players. Restricting these resources can create a sense of urgency. In the same game, I had natural gas create explosions, and so open flames were now a hazard, forcing the party to limit their resources to only one light source. The same thing can be done for time as a resource, using a timer to represent how long the party has before the dragon wakes and realises someone is in their lair, or using food and spell slots as a way to force the group to find resources or clear and establish a safe zone within the dungeon whereby they can eat and rest properly can be a valuable tool. Lastly, including secrets that encourage exploration and make players understand the value to taking risks can make these games incredibly fun. Players will often take risks when their resources are limited. They will try to get a big reward for taking a risky decision. In these situations, I always try to have a few pre-planned rewards in my head ready for when players do that. I encourage putting them down on your notes. By having a give and take approach to player agency and exploration, by limiting resources in some locations and making them plentiful in others, you can create a dungeon that feels complex and exciting to explore. And there you have it, fellow game masters. Hopefully this equips you to tackle challenge of running a mega dungeon and deliver epic adventures that will keep your players coming back for more. This video is inspired by my own games and the lessons I have learned through many years of succeeding and failing to run huge Moria-inspired set pieces. Hopefully it gives you some tools and the confidence to set forth and create something incredible. And I'll include links to some great mega dungeons I recommend if you don't want to make your own from scratch. No affiliation, I just think that these are great examples. Once again, if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe for more. Happy adventuring.